All right. Page posted. And it is done. Another scenery in the books. Ah. <sighs> Well, now what? Another one. Oh shit. I was making a video. Ah. Get out the way, dog. I got a video to make. What's going on guys, Runut44 here. It has been a very, very busy three weeks. <laughs> I have uh, since completed this scenery and then got wrapped up in some real world work and was not able to come back to this video right away. So it has been about a month. But yeah, <laughs> we're finally getting back to this video and I realize now, going through the editing process of this video, that, well, I just missed a lot of stuff. And it wasn't very detailed through and through. So, I'm going to edit the absolute shit out of this video. <laughs> and probably remove most of the context. So, if you're looking for a video that's a uh, good, you know, tutorial how-to through and through video, this is not going to be it. This is going to be far from it. Anyways, let's get into the editing, let's get this video done, let's show you what we got. Now we're going to bring in imagery for this area, so I'm lo loading in a TIFF file right now, and this should be georeferenced to the area. Um, let's go ahead and turn on the Bing tile server, and we'll see here, let's take a look at this crossing for reference. Drag this down here. Boom, boom. Okay, so this one has already been georeferenced. But basically, what I like to do is when I import an imagery into QGIS here, after I've downloaded and stitched the tiles together, I like to match it up with the Bing imagery the best I can. And what I mean by that is usually when you download an imagery for a satellite source, it is going to be slightly different positioning than the imagery used in the simulator. Um, so that meaning, you know, this building right here in my imagery, if I disable my imagery, it may not line up exactly with the Bing imagery. You know, instead of being right here, it may be over here in the trees or some shit. <laughs> you know, it, it could be off a little bit. Usually it's not that much, but it can be off a little bit. And a lot of it has to do with the angle that the imagery was taken at. If it was taken by a sensing aircraft or if it was taken by satellite, there may be a slight tilt or an angle to that area. Um, so obviously we want to try to fix that the best we can. And the easiest way to do that, I found, is using QGIS here. There is a plugin, if I can remember, plugins, manage and install... Maybe. Here we go. There is this plugin that you can find in the QGIS repository called Freehand Raster GeoReferencer. And basically, what you do is I'm going to get rid of this, remove layer. Maybe someday it'll unfreeze. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to remove that layer, and then right here at the top, we get these uh, buttons. We can click this, say browse, and of course it's going to dump me in some random freaking user folder that I don't even want to go to. Hit that. Um, you know what? We might as well hit the reprojected one. We'll scroll in here, and we'll take a look at... that, and we can see that it's lined up. Um, so obviously this is not going to be aligned, so we can say move raster, and it would be something like this, right? So as we can decrease the transparency here, we can see the other imagery fade through, and we can see that, yeah, it is majorly screwed up and borked now. <laughs> but we simply pick 
in area in the imagery. Like, I like to focus on this little crossing here at the end of the runway, and I focus on this little area where the stream goes underneath the crossing, or at least butts up to it, and you have this curvature right here. So we just... Oops, wrong direction. Decrease transparency until we find that kind of same thing inside the imagery. And then we're going to increase transparency until we can kind of figure out where both areas are. Click the wrong button like usual. And then we're going to take this. And first, grab the right tool. We're going to kind of find that gap. And we're going to set it right in there just like that. Deselect, and we can fully increase the transparency. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Now, keyboard down, because we're getting serious. We got our imagery loaded into, or I should say our geo-referenced imagery loaded into Adobe Photoshop. And as we can see on our airstrip, we have trees covering half the airstrip or tree shadows covering half the airstrip. Obviously, this isn't going to look good in the simulator, so <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to deal with that. Um, also, our trees have a very weird bright and blue hue to them, so yeah, that's something else we're going to have to correct. Obviously, that's not going to look good in the simulator. So, first thing first, we put a sample to another poorly um, <laughs> recolored uh, satellite project that we already have done inside of this project which we're about to do yeah it's giving me flashbacks already <laughs> actually this is pretty close um, it's not exact and yeah I, I have never had imagery exactly match up to date so we're still tweaking and tweaking and tweaking until we get something that's close enough and then we just repeat the process obviously for this area yeah, we're going to try to match this imagery as best to it as we can. So, first and foremost, we're going to correct, uh, let's just say, a little bit of hue and saturation. As we can see, very minimal change with some brightness and contrast. We'll darken that sucker up a little bit. And then we follow in with green. So, we got to add some green to the trees, get rid of some of that blue, add some brown, because as we can tell, the trees do have a little bit of a brownish yellow tint to them. And then... Um, yeah, we're going to do some color balance to the area, bring some more of that brown out, kill out some more of that blue, and then a levels adjustment where we kill out even more of the blue and head and even more yellow to get that nice yellow, um, nice yellow look to it. Obviously, at this point, we are no longer color correcting for the sample. <laughs> at this point in the process, I have already put this imagery into the simulator several times and done manual adjustments to my color correction to get it as close as possible to the color of the imagery surrounding the airstrip. So next thing we got to do is, man, our fields here, they're looking mighty brown, so why don't we just uh, put a little bit of a green hue to it. Obviously, that doesn't look quite right. It's still got quite a bit of brown in it. So, you know, let's just fix that with some hue and saturation. Add some more green in. Oh yeah, now it's looking good. But, oh wait, what the heck's going on with our lakes here? They're looking mighty, uh, mighty Bahama color on us today, aren't they? Well, yeah, I guess that's possible for clear freshwater lakes. But, yeah, that's a little overkill, right? So, yeah, let's just, uh, let's just slap some brightness and contrast on that. And at least bring that down to the brightness of the surrounding imagery. Now, we retain that nice watercolor, which is a natural watercolor, by the way. And at the same time, it's not just freaking overkill. And there you have it. Bada boom, bada bing. Everything's recolored. But wait, we forgot something, didn't we? Oh, man. All these trees. How am I going to fix all these tree shadows? Well, through the, uh, through the magic of editing, and by editing I mean clicking off this imagery right here, <laughs> we completely rebuild that entire side of the airstrip using this nifty little uh, band-aid tool, spot healing brush. So yes, this took about uh, 
two hours, I want to say, simply taking samples from this field here, the trees, and some other areas around the imagery to completely blend in and rebuild this side of the airstrip as best as we can. And obviously, it's not perfect. It's not 100% true to life. And you can tell some little defects here and there where it just doesn't look quite right. But you know what? It's not going to matter in the simulator because this is all going to get covered up by vegetation, grass. So it's going to be a heck of a lot uh, less noticeable. So, yeah. <laughs> um, something else you didn't see in the, in the uh, process here as we were going through and editing. Yeah, we had to do some color correction to the runway here. And I think, which one is it on? on I think it's just on the main recolor thing here. Um well, it's not showing well, but this runway, obviously when we did the green color correction, it turned the runway like a yellow green. So we had to go back into our, uh, our uh, folder here, our parent directory, and delete, or basically brush, take a brush and <laughs> color out all that, just the colors, and bring it back to a nice kind of gravel white, because this is a slightly run down gravel airstrip so that's what i'm going with all right now that you have the lowdown on what the uh, image processing process was <laughs> it's time to jump into the simulator and get on to the next fun part of this project so let's go anyways zooming on out we can see the full extent of the current coverage area for this airstrip and if we pan our camera around you can see right here, Chinona Cabin Strip. So yes, just a stone's throw away from Chinona Cabin Strip to Snowflake Lake to Talkeetna Airport, Alaska. All these yellow squares are, are terraforming our current 2 meter digital elevation model, which you can see has a de decent extent covering the airport and surrounding train and ponds, lakes, etc. Not the entire coverage area though, because it does eat up a good bit of space. And uh, yeah, we're uh, we're not going to look at that the entire time, so let's just hide rectangles, shall we? Let's simplify this view. We're going to hide airport features and apron features. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and lock the scenery and shrubs tabs so we don't accidentally start moving things around. Now, obviously, as you can see, First step in clearing out the trees was to draw an exclusion polygon, which you can kind of see around the edge here. It's, yeah, there's a lot of clutter now, <laughs> but you can kind of see where that area has been excluded. So we basically just enclose this entire area in an exclusion uh, polygon. Tell it to delete the trees. And then we painstakingly go through here and for any little tiny freaking tree feature, we got to outline that with another polygon. So one polygon, two polygons, three polygons, four, five. Yeah, you get the gist. And each one of these polygons is a step down in tree elevation. So I basically take a look at the tree heights in the area and I make a determination. Okay, these are full grown trees. These are, you know, a little bit younger trees or these are fairly new trees. And that determines the height of the trees that I put in the area. So... Even the full-grown trees are shorter than the default flight simulator trees, but then you go down the list and you know go even shorter, go even shorter, and even have uh, options where I have shorter trees and you know kind of less density to match areas where there is less density and the imagery. There. <laughs> now that everything is nicely organized again, we can get rid of that damn screen, and we can clearly see our masterpiece of work and replanting trees in this field. Now all we have to do is repeat the process on this big sucker over here, which I am about 25% done with. Yeah, that'll be a project for another day because it is a ton of clicking. So yes, much like Chinona Cabin Strip, the entire side of this airstrip is going to be covered in a dense area of vegetation. And obviously these trees are gonna be walked in and then we're going to have 3D trees on top of this. So right now, currently, we have an entire side of this airstrip done. And obviously, the smart thing to do would be to just take all of these bushes here 
select them all, duplicate them, and then move them over to this right hand side. Then you may say, yeah, that would save you a lot of time, right? No, because <laughs> as luck may have it, there's another bug in this, ver this uh, release version of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Where if you duplicate, for whatever reason, a large number of objects, the objects get mixed together. You know, you may have a group here that I have selected, then on the complete opposite end, you may have a part of another group where those objects have just somehow gotten mixed into that group. So, yeah. No. Um, yeah, every single group has to be placed by hand. Which, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't take that long. 30 40 minutes for the side probably another 20 or 30 minutes to you know get everything adjusted and finish out everything uh th that's with no breaks by the way <laughs> but uh yeah it, it can never be easy then of course the next thing we need to do or i guess technically this came before the bush is dead but <laughs> we're kind of showing it out of order is we take this mighty nifty apron here and we trace out, if we move it off to the side, we can see where our imagery was for our gravel runway. And obviously the ground texture for this just mimics dirt. So yeah, it doesn't really look like gravel. Luckily, I have a custom gravel texture in the form of an apron. This does use an asphalt texture, but we kind of just decrease the uh or increase the transparency of it and it kind of filters through add some more detail texture to the runway making it look a little bit more like gravel it's probably going to act like asphalt I don't think it's going to act like dirt since there's technically an asphalt layer or it's treated as an asphalt layer and it's above the dirt layer so you probably won't get that nice dirt spray like you did on a uh, Chinona cabin strip but you know it looks a lot better than having gravel with the dirt detail texture to it so yeah we, we basically what we did is we took this apron and every little spot along the edges of this uh, runway we tried to match it up the best we could because if we go in here and we select said apron and I'm willing to just basically increase the opacity of this so we increase it up so we can see more of the detail and we can notice that it kind of blends at the edges here, right? So yeah, we wanted to keep this blend within the white section of the runway to basically let it to, you know, blend in a lot better. Although, you know, we lose some of that gravel detail by dumping down this opacity. We retain some of that detail and at the same time, it blends nicely so it's not like you don't get any weird like clipping along the edges or anything so yeah a little bit of a uh, pro tip for you there <laughs> what's going on guys editor nut here so this is the part of the video <laughs> where everything just starts to fall apart and uh, I'm not really saying that in a bad way maybe it is who knows but yeah my my commentary definitely fell off in this part hence the voiceover now this is the most demanding part of the scenery development process here is just sitting here and placing you know section of bush after section of bush trees making little adjustments here and there and this process was so long that it, obviously i didn't go through and you know commentate every little section or even it got to a point where I didn't record you know hours worth of work and that's pretty much why we're jumping into you know just one half of the runway doing bushes as <laughs> I got carried away with the process and you know completely forgot to film doing you know bushes for one half the runway which I mean to be honest, you're not really missing a whole lot. <laughs> Whatever you're looking at right now is the exact same thing I did for the other side of the runway. And you're probably noticing here that there's a little bit of a pause in between placing these groups of uh, bushes. And 
that's because it was taking I, I believe I was counting a but it was about one and a half two minutes one and a half two minutes in between being able to place these groups of bushes that's how long it took for the simulator to duplicate that group and of course that number just got higher and higher you know as the video or as the uh, process went on and more and more vegetation was added and it was just to do with you know the the density of the bushes and as we can see here going into you know starting the the tree placement process here. I've created groupings of trees with all sorts of different sizes, variations, whatever. And you can definitely tell that this process is going a lot faster. Now, what you're seeing as far as the placement process right now is I'm really placing a lot of trees and bushes, like a lot, like thousands of trees and bushes here. And one thing that, you know, obviously I, I'm not going to show in this video because I don't have it. One thing I did end up doing is when I got done placing these trees and bushes, because performance is already so bad while you're in development mode, you know, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, you know, 20, 15, 20 FPS pretty much consistently, and it gets worse as time goes on. There's not really a good way to judge the performance of a scenery until you've compiled it and loaded it into the simulator. So I got all this work done. I built the project, loaded it in the simulator, and the first time I flew it, I was getting 25 FPS. And the only thing I could think of was, oh shit. <laughs> I spent all this time, and I'm not even gonna be able to work on the scenery, or you know, be able to use the scenery. Um, and you see, I'm kind of cleaning up the area, some of the over placements here, but yeah, I basically went through and found out that the simulator had duplicated like thousands of bushes and I don't know how it happened somehow during the process of like duplicating the groups or something. I think it, I don't think it was during duplicating the groups. I think it was on some like one of the times I loaded the project up. It just up and duplicated like several thousand bushes. So I went through, removed all those duplicates, got it up to about 50 something frames per second. Then after that, I went through and I actually removed about 50% of the trees and bushes. So as we can see now with the finished version of the scenery and the simulator, there's far fewer, there's still a ton of you know 3D trees and bushes, but there are far fewer than what there were to begin with and what you're you just saw previously so with that said the scenery is now available and it's freeware so if you like what you're seeing in this video go check out the scenery link for it's down in the description below give it a download leave me a comment on the scenery and let me know what you think and you know as always check out my latest payware release as well chanelna cabin strip you can get it for uh, 9.99 us dollars on my website and uh flightsome.to and <laughs> whenever i get more time coming to the Microsoft Flight Simulator Marketplace. But until then, you can find it from those two other stores. Or sorry, three other, score, other stores. It's on um, uh, the flightsim.com store as well. So three locations right now. Adding that fourth location eventually. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. This was a absolute crap ton of work <laughs> going through this footage it was over six hours of recorded footage condensed down into what like 20 something minutes here so yeah leave me a like on the video leave me a comment down below if you like what i'm doing here consider subscribing to the channel let's get up past 500 subscribers we're way overdue for it and as always guys i'll see you in the next video Roadnut 44, over and out.